it's the brew dog hot cave. See the number of home brewers that like access to this. <laughs> Get it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a what a punch it smells. Just get a quick swatch around and then we'll put mm-hmm. back here too. Or we could, well, yeah. some There was one guy yeah. on the forum that I use called Soup Dragon. If you're watching this, I'm asking the question. Soup Dragon seems to reckon that you bought all the Atanum hops that came into the country. Ah. Have we got any Atanum hops in here? We do have some Atanum hops in here, we most certainly do. Uh, I'm not sure about all of it. We. That's, that's a major source of concern for a lot of commercial brewers, not just in the UK but in the US as well, uh, because a lot of these varieties are trademarked, they're only allowed to grow on certain farms, so they control the amount that's grown and therefore the price that comes off. Um, And for stuff like, um, especially Simcoe, Simcoe's the main one, we use a lot of Simcoe in a lot of our beers, it's it's the main one we have. And if we were left without Simcoe, we would be fucked with a capital left, essentially. we wouldn't be able to get the aroma that we have on the hardcore, we wouldn't be able to get it on the punk IPA for example. The Simcoe uh, gives a lot of the beers a really nice kind of piney resinous note but it's also got a lot of um, kind of tangerine citrus in there so it's it's a real essential a real essential hop for a lot of our things. There's no alternative then? No, no there, there really isn't, there really isn't. And it's, it's the same for a lot of these a lot of these hops. Uh, a tannum is irreplaceable, Amarillo is irreplaceable and uh, yeah the problem is there's so much, the, the market over in the states has increased so much, I forget the exact figures but a couple of years ago the American craft brewers took about 35% of the speciality hops that came out of America, yeah. this last crop year they took something like 65% so the, the, the amount is getting squeezed for everyone it's so more expensive it's well. becoming a lot more expensive like we pay some of the hop varieties, you know, we pay 25, 30 pounds a kilogram for some of these varieties. I've noticed that there are some cheaper hops, that's usually the ones that, I admit I have to go for cheaper hops, Yeah. and I've used uh, one called Aramis, have you heard of that? It's, no, it's, no. Uh, it's grown in Alsace, in France, ah, okay. um, more of a lager a lager style hop I suppose, right. but I've used that on a couple of a couple of brews. Right. So, uh, Seems to be alright. In, in my brews anyway, I don't know if Do you do little experiments looking into different kinds of hops that you could use in the worst case scenario? We, you do we, think? Yeah, we, we do a lot. I mean, like I said, a lot of these hops are irreplaceable, but we do we do try to look at new varieties that are coming out yeah. and, and try and uh, brew beers with them, like pretty much on the pilot brew system, mm-hmm. just to see how they taste, how they're going to react, um, what they're going to be like. And, and it's good, you know, it's, it, it brings a level of experimentation into the brewing as well because, you know, we know that we're not going to be able to use these hops forever yeah. because the market is shrinking every single year. So yeah. we're going to have to start being a little bit more inventive and a little bit yeah, more experimental with some of the hop, hops that we use. Uh, I noticed all the old boxes are all pellets. Is it all pellets that you use? It's all or whole flowers? We do use some whole flower hops, but that's only ever if we cannot get the pelletized hops. This is quite possibly the biggest container of hops yeah, it's massive, isn't I've it? ever seen. Is that as big as it gets, or do you get? Uh, you do get 20 kilogram bags. These are wow. five kilogram bags. 20 kilo hops. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. And uh, um, yeah, pelletized hops. They are good in a lot of ways. A lot of brewers frown on them uh, because they're not traditional. But pelletized hops are good for a number of reasons. Um, they are much more stable because they can pack them a lot tighter, they can get a lot more of the air yeah, out. Yeah. There's a lot less extraneous material in there that you're not going to want, um, a lot less kind of cellulose and stuff like that, so they're basically compacted. Um, they are much better when we add them for dry hopping as well. Yeah, if you add yeah. whole hop cones into an FV and you don't put them in a bag, you can't get the beer out. We discovered that. Really? Quite, yeah. yeah. Quite, quite badly. Um, but that, I love Atanum. Atanum is the one I always go to oh, wow. because they've got an amazing Jeff Lemon aroma to it, like really, really oh, crazy. Man, that, is, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah that, they're spectacular. These are expensive ones. These are, are Atanum expensive. Atanum are particularly expensive. This last mm. year, uh, I forget which way around it was, but the hop crop. Um, 
for a ton of an <laughs> 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 very, very nice how, how much do you pay for uh, for like a five kilo bag of these then? Oh, I forget exactly. They're somewhere about 20, 20 pound a kilogram. Um, 20, 20 that's quid. 100 quid. Yeah. 100 quid. I won't, so. I won't steal your horse. <laughs> there we go. I'll put them back, everyone. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, wow. yeah, it smells amazing. Absolutely amazing smell there. Yeah. It looks a bit like cat food, but <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it does. smells wonderful. Yeah. Um, the one that whenever I pull out any uh, any pole cone, the one that people always get is that it, uh, mm. it looks and smells like weed yeah. <laughs> because it's actually very very closely related. To is that? Yeah, right. very close. It's same uh, same genus or same family, something like that. Um, hey man, you've been growing yeah. some stuff there. <laughs> and this is kind of. This is some kind of older hops. It does look um, older, yeah. You can see it's kind of browned a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's also. But you still use that, obviously. Uh, we would probably not use this bag because I'm starting to get some cheesy notes on it. Old hops. Once it gets really too oxidized, it's just a little it, too it, old. It, it does look quite old, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, um, so what kind is this? Is this, this is various ones? Or? I believe Galena. Oh, Galena! Look at that—a big bag of Galena hops. Home brewers of the world. How much would you pay for that, even in that state? Hmm? Well, I mean, so uh, uh, you wouldn't use it obviously for commercial beer, but you know, do you know what I mean? Is that is there something somebody could do with that to somebody, make a decent beer? Somebody or could. I mean, you know, up to a certain stage, you can use hops when they're when they're a little bit older. Once they start to get that cheesy aroma to yeah, them, though, yeah. that's you're going to impart that flavour onto the beer, and that's yeah, not really. That's, um, I don't it, think I would put them in my beer either. No, no. It's just one of these things that. It's been lying out here for so long, and we only really use Galena in Riptide, um, and we don't really produce a lot of Riptide. It's more of a, an occasional instead of a core beer like it used to be. So, yeah, it's just it's gone stale, and that'll probably end up just getting dumped with the rest of the hops to go up with the farmer. So I've heard that uh, hops can be toxic to dogs. There is a blue dog, isn't there? Yes, there is. Dog, so. How do we manage the, the, the dog near the hops, or is that going to be a problem? Or? No, he doesn't, he, he doesn't like hops too much, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I'm not even sure if he, if he drinks much beer. What's the dog's name? Bracken. Bracken. It's a chocolate lamb. Is that James's yeah. dog? Or? It's actually James's dad's James dog. dog. Yeah, and that's... Um, the reason they called it Brew Dog, actually, was because uh, when James's dad got Bracken, puppy and James and Martin were sitting in the house going over the table and trying to think of a name for the company and everything like that and Bracken was all over the papers and yeah. puppies tend to be um, jumping all around the place and yeah, Rudolph. Cool. Just a very nice name. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah, so I'm interested in various different types of hops. I've only used certain ones and stuff. I've used Cascade, I've used Challenger, ah, okay. um, I've used Bramlin Cross. Yep. Um, and the Aramis as well, but that, those are the only ones that I've used to enhance my brews so far. The, the Challenger and the Bramling Cross <coughs> are that two varieties of UK hops which we quite like as well because they tend to be less subtle than not. Uh, yeah, if you could, I'm trying to rip this back. It's not really um, yeah, they tend to be less subtle than a lot of the UK hops. Yeah. UK hops are very, very nice. Uh, and a lot of their and a lot of the profile and stuff like that, but they they do tend to be quite subtle. Yeah. Uh, Challenger and Bramley Cross are two that are quite distinctive and are quite powerful in, in their aroma, and that's really what we want to do. I mean, when when the guys started up the company up here, they really wanted to do. This is Nelson. Oh, event, by the way. Nelson. That's a it's a lovely lovely yeah. hops. Um, when the guys started the company, they wanted to do something that was different and. The easiest, well, not the easiest way to do oh. that, but the, the big way to do that was to use different yeah. strong varieties yeah. and, and kind of mix things up a little bit. And Nelson is a beer uh, uh, type of hops that we use an awful lot of up here. Um, that is, as, as far as I'm concerned, that is one of the best hop smells. Uh, that is unbelievably good. Yeah. That's uh, that's a fresh crop as well. That's this year's crop. It's New Zealand harvest in kind of February, March time. So the, the, the U.S. stuff that we have is from last, I think it's November, right. something like that, uh, they sort of 
barbers in the back of here. So these these are probably the freshest hops that we have just now. Um, we use a lot of this in Punk IPA. Gives it an amazing tropical fruit, passion fruit. So when you're making hardcore IPA, uh -huh. hardcore IPA is sort of like a souped up version of Punk IPA, isn't it? That's my perception. Yeah, anyway. yeah, totally. But how, by what degree are you increasing the, the level of hops now? We use, let's see if I can pull these out you don't need to give me state secrets or <laughs> all bar figures. No, no, it's all right. I mean, we've we've never been shy about sharing recipes. Um, we use <laughs> recipes. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna clone and steal it. About, <laughs> uh, basically, it is about twice the amount of hops in the brew, um, and about one and a half times the amount of hops in the in the. Right. And the sugar? How about it must be a larger I mean sugar, sugar obviously. Yeah, the, the, the target OG for a hardcore is ten eighty four, ten eighty six. That's pretty yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's quite a lot more. But the thing <coughs> with the hardcore IPA is because we have so much hops into it, it's a very, very bitter beer. Um, we want it to have a fair amount of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. So we stop fermenting much higher, we would stop a hardcore fermenting about 1018, 1020, something like that, to leave a little bit more sweetness in there so that you can get all the aggressiveness of the hops, but there's also balance. Mm -hmm. So do you, you cold crash it then to stop fermentation? Yeah, we do. Uh, that's the least effective uh, way of controlling your fermentation. It's not a very good way of doing it, but with the system that we have, it's the only way that we can yeah. to do it. So once the beer hits a certain gravity, and we know because we've done it for you know, brewing hardcore for uh, about four years now, so we know once it hits a certain level, as long as it's been following its fermentation <coughs> profile, we crash it down to 16, hold it there for dias diacetyl rest, <coughs> um, and then once we're happy with the levels of diacetyl, we will then chill it down to seven degrees, purge off, much of the yeast as we can and then add the hops. Cool. Yeah. If anybody wants any proof that Stuart is a, a, a serious brewer, then we're going to zoom in. Come in Colin, let's have a look here. You look across the bridge of Stuart's nose, you can actually see he's got hops all, the, all, all over his face here. Now that's a brewer, baby. Okay. <laughs> Oops, yeah, malt dust on the t-shirt, malt in the hair. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good day today, I didn't get covered in yeast. That happens a lot as well. <laughs>